This morning's scripture reading will be coming from Acts chapter 2, verses 40 through 47. Acts 2, 40 through 47. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Good morning, everyone. This lesson is going to be the last in a series of lessons on why I am a member of the Church of Christ. And when I finish this lesson, I will have given you 15 reasons why I am a member of the Lord's Church. It's not to say that there are not more reasons. There is actually many more reasons why I am a member. But I think what I've given, will have given unto you, will be sufficient to show you that being a member of the Lord's church is far more important and far more reasonable than being a member of any denomination. And so this morning I want to say, I give another reason why I'm a member of the Church of Christ, and that is because salvation is only in Christ's church. Now most denominations will teach that you don't have to be a member of the church to be saved. But if they're talking about denominations, the institutions of which they are members of, then I have to agree 100%. But if they're talking about the institution, the church that Jesus paid for with his own blood, they are dead wrong. Most denominations teach that you can be served in one church as well as another. So if you can be saved out of a denomination as well as in that denomination, then why be a member of that denomination? Why preach and work to get others to be members of it if salvation does not reside within that church? Such labor would not be for the purpose of saving souls, but simply for the purpose of making proselytes a human creed and a man-made fraternity. Any church that is not essential to man's salvation is certainly not Christ's church. I say this for the simple reason. The Bible teaches that membership of Christ's church is indispensable to our salvation. What I want to look at this morning is the reasons why it's essential to be members of the Lord's church and because salvation resides. And I'm going to give you ten reasons this morning. And the first one is that salvation is in the church because it is a blood-bought institution. Now, the Apostle Paul gave instructions to the Ephesian elders there in Acts chapter 20, verse 28. And he said, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Spirit had made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Thus Paul would tell the church at Corinth, Ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 through 20. That price was the blood of Jesus Christ. So I want to know a few things that we can learn from this. First of all, church members are blood-bought. That means non-members are not blood-bought. And who that believes in the Bible would ever say that we can be saved apart from the blood? Especially when you consider Hebrews 9.22. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. And then secondly, the church is the only thing that was bought by that blood. And therefore, if you're not in the church of Jesus Christ, then you have not been purchased by his blood. And the third thing we can learn from this is that the church was purchased with the blood of Jesus Christ. And therefore, if the church is a non-essential institution like many claim, then Jesus shed his blood to no avail. Now, who would claim that? Every person who says that you can be saved apart from the church, then you bring an indictment against Jesus himself. 
And it's equivalent to charging God as being an unmerciful fiend who would shed the blood of his own son for a non-essential, worthless institution. We must not dare in word or in deed to bring such an accusation against the Father of all mercies and the God of all comfort. Another reason salvation is in the church is because Paul promised that Christ would save the church. Giving instructions to various family members, Paul said in Ephesians 5.23, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Now, earlier in Ephesians 1.22 and 23, he said that the church was the body. In Colossians 1.18, he says the body is the church. So they're synonymous. They're one and the same. And thus Christ is the Savior of the church, which is the body. And this being true, then, what about those who are not members of the church? Well, the truth is, they are living in a world without promise and without hope. Third, salvation is in the church because it is there that man is reconciled unto God. Paul said of Jesus concerning both Jew and Gentile in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 16, that he might reconcile both unto God in one body, talking about the church, by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. Notice the premises and the conclusion in this argument that Paul makes here. It is admitted that man has to be reconciled to God, because apart from God, you can't be saved. But reconciliation unto God is in the one body, the one church, here in Ephesians 2.16. And therefore, man has to be in the church to be saved. No if, ands, or buts about it. Also, salvation is in the church because that group of people is who Christ is going to present unto himself. Again, notice the words of the Apostle Paul in Ephesians 5, verses 25 through 27. He said, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Christ is going to present the church to himself. And if we are members of that church, then all is well. But if not then how could we ever expect to be presented to Christ? Fifth, man cannot be saved out of the church because God adds all of the saved to the church. The very last verse in our scripture reading this morning, in Acts chapter 2, verse 47, it says, The Lord will add to the church, or the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. And on that occasion, 3,000 souls were added to the church out of the possible one million that were present there on the day of Pentecost. In their condition, in their lost condition, they were not members. <clears throat> in their saved conditions, they were members. And thus we see that the saved was added to the church. So they could not become saved without becoming members of the church. They could not become members of the church without being saved because the requirements of both are synonymous. This means that all of the lost are non-members, all of the saved are members. Thus, salvation is in the church because it consists of all of the saved. There are none saved outside of the church. <clears throat> and sixth, if one has to be a child in the family of God to be saved, then he has to be a member of God's church to be saved. This is true because Paul declares that God's family or his house is God's church. Listen to what he told Timothy in 1 Timothy 3 verse 15. He says, But if I tarry long that thou, may, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God. You notice he says the house of God is the church of God. And the house of God is the church <clears throat> and the house is the family. It's not the building. And I say that because we have an example of the conversion of the Philippian jailer in Acts chapter 16, verses 33 and 34. And I want you to notice what he said. It says, And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his straight way. 
And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing with God, in God with all his house. <clears throat> now, when it says he believed in God with all his house, he's referring to his family there, not his residence. We have another example of Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, verse 2. It says he was a devout man and one that feared God with all his house. But it was his family not his dwelling place that feared God. So when we see that word house, sometimes it is referring to the family, the people. <clears throat> so we conclude that the house of God is the family of God. It's the church of God. If one is not in the church of God, then he's not in the family of God. If he's not in the family, he's not a child of God because God doesn't have any children outside of his family. And you know, there's preachers out there that say a man can be saved. He can be a child of God but not be a member of the Lord's church or his family. And when they do, they're teaching that God has children outside of his family, and he's guilty of spiritual adultery. This reproaches the very name of God, and shame on those who do that. We also know that salvation is in the church because Jesus, the good shepherd, taught that man must enter into the fold to be saved. In John chapter 10, verse 9, he says, I am the door. <coughs> by, <coughs> excuse me, by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Only the saved are within the fold. And the fold is the church, which is the flock over which Christ has set overseers, Acts chapter 20, verse 28. And therefore, we can boldly say that salvation is in the church and not outside of the church. Another reason why we know salvation is in the church is because man cannot be saved outside of the church because man cannot be saved as a branch separate from the vine. Jesus was speaking to his disciples there in John 15, verse 5, when he said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Christ and his disciples constitute one glorious plant. Men cannot be saved apart from this plan because Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. And we know that these branches represent men and not denominations, as a lot of people claim, because of what verse 6 says. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them to the fire and they are burned. So unless we abide in Christ, we cannot be saved. And you cannot be in Christ unless you are in the body, which is the church, because the church is his body. Because when you're baptized into Christ, as per Romans 6, 3 and Galatians 3, verse 27, you're also baptized into one body, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, into one church. We know that salvation is in Christ's church also because it's impossible to be saved outside of the church because it's impossible to be saved without being justified. Paul said in Romans 8, verse 30, Whom he called, them he also justified. And we are called into one body, Colossians 3, 15. And remember earlier in Colossians 1, 18, he says the body is the church. So I want to take notice of this. The called are justified. The called are one body, one church, and the justified, therefore the justified are in the church. This makes it very plain that if man is not in the church, then he is not justified. He's not made just. And then, number 10, it is impossible to be saved outside of the church because it's impossible to be saved without being delivered from the power of darkness. Now in Colossians 1 verse 13, Paul clearly says that the Father hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. Now we learn that the kingdom and the church are the same in Matthew 16 verse 18 and 19. And those in the kingdom, they have been delivered from the power of darkness. And therefore, those who are not in the kingdom, they're still in darkness. And those who are not in the kingdom, not in the church, 
They need to have their eyes open to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them that are sanctified by faith, Acts chapter 26, verse 18. So with all these examples that we have, it's pretty evident, I think, that a person has to be a member of the church in order to be saved. That's where the saved's added, added to. And if you're not a member of the church, you're not saved. You're outside. But you know, there's still some who contend that there, if a person has good morals, he's a fine, upstanding citizen, and he lives a clean life, then... He can go to heaven regardless of his relationship to Christ and the church. Well, let's say that's true. If that's true, then we have to draw some conclusions here. If a man can be saved simply upon his goodness, and that's all, separate and apart from Christ and the church, then man can be saved without Christ ever coming into the world. But Christ came to save the world, John chapter 3, verse 17. One can be saved apart from Christ's stripes. But it's by his stripes that we are healed, 1 Peter 2.24. A person then can be saved without the death of Christ, but he died for our sins, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3. Or man can be justified without the resurrection of Christ, but he was raised for our justification, Romans 4.25. Or we can be redeemed apart from his blood, but we have redemption through his blood, Ephesians 1, verse 7. If we can be simply saved because of our goodness, then we can be saved even without faith. But without faith, it's impossible to please God, Hebrews 11, verse 6. Or we could be saved without repenting. <clears throat> but Jesus, <clears throat> excuse me, Jesus said if we don't repent, we're going to perish, Luke chapter 13, verse 3 and verse 5. Or man can even deny Christ and be saved. But Jesus also said, if you deny him, he's going to deny you before the Father, which is in heaven, Matthew chapter 10, 33. Or a person can be saved without baptism. But we know baptism saves us. Peter said that very plainly, 1 Peter 3, 21. Or if we can be saved by our simple goodness, and we can be saved without ever being born again. Jesus made it very plain. We have to be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. John chapter 3, verse 3 and verse 5. Or we can be saved without ever obeying the gospel. Paul made it very plain that Jesus is going to bring vengeance on them who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 8. And if all it takes is just being a good person, then a man can be saved without ever being converted. <clears throat> but we have to be converted to enter into the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 18, verse 3. Or we can be saved just by simply being ignorant of the truth. But Jesus said it's the truth that sets us free, John 8, verse 32. Or we can be saved without loving the truth. But those who don't love the truth, Paul says they will perish, 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 10. Or even a man can be saved apart from Christ's name. But there is no salvation in any other name but Christ's name, Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Or we can be saved apart from Christ. But as Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing, John 15, 5. Or a person can be saved out of the body. But Christ is the Savior of the body, Ephesians 5, 23. So there's no doubt that our relationship to Christ and to his church does matter because it's a matter of salvation. There are many reasons why I am a member of the Church of Christ, and I hope you have many reasons for the same. But I believe that the most important reason is the ones that we discussed this morning because salvation is only in Jesus' church. The one that he died for the one that he bled for, the one that's described for us very explicitly in the scriptures. Salvation is only in Christ's church, not in some man-made denomination. And the Bible is very explicit about this description. In fact, you would have to try to misunderstand it to mistake it. It is so clear. 
Now, the Church of Christ is not a denomination. A lot of people think it is, but it is undenominational, it is non-denominational, and it is anti-denominational. Jesus only built one church, and if you're not a member of his church, you cannot be saved. Now, if you'll notice, there is not a single denomination mentioned anywhere in the scripture. You can search from Genesis to Maps. You can't find one single denomination. We know faith comes by hearing God's word, Romans 10, verse 17. So that tells me if you can't find the denominations in the Bible, they are not of faith. Simple as that. I'm not trying to be mean-spirited. I'm not trying to be narrow-minded. But Jesus did say that the way to heaven is very narrow, Matthew 7, verse 14. And all I ask you to do is be like the Brians of Acts 17, verse 11. Search the scriptures to see whether these things are so. And if they are so, you need to believe them. You need to obey them. They need to be your life. If you're not a member of the Lord's church and you desire to be so, there's some things that you have to do. You first have to have faith that Jesus is who he claimed to be. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God, Hebrews 11, verse 6. We also have to repent of our sins. To do that, you have to be sorry for the sins that you committed. Because God, this sorrow, works repentance, 2 Corinthians 7, verse 10. And repentance is simply just a change of mind that brings about a change of action and a change of lifestyle. Then you have to confess Jesus Christ. This confession is made unto salvation, Romans 10, verse 10. And then we have to be buried with Christ in baptism. Being buried in baptism, raised with him through the faith of the operation of God, Colossians chapter 2, verse 12. Our, as Paul said in Romans 6, 4, raised to walk in newness of life. There's your act of being born again. Once you do this, you're a child of God. You're born into the family of God. But you still have to live faithful to life to receive that crown of life, Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. If there's anything that you need to take care of to make sure that you're right with God, the opportunity for you is now. If we can help you in any way, whatever it may be, we encourage you to respond to the invitation while together.